The very popular governor there, uh, Chris Sununu, has been reelected to seek a fourth two-year term. He will now serve that fourth two-year term, and we are lucky to have uh, Governor Sununu with us here live tonight for our coverage. Governor Sununu, uh, welcome. Uh, first of all, congratulations, and uh, how do you think the Republicans are doing tonight? You're watching the returns as well. Will they meet expectations tonight? I think so. I mean, you know, uh, nationally, at least, as we're looking to, again, take that net one plus, plus one seat. Maybe it'll be one or two. It'll be interesting because I'd, I'd, I think we all know that we're likely to get lawsuits in maybe Pennsylvania, maybe a runoff in Georgia, maybe lawsuits in Arizona. So I'm not sure if, we're gonna, if, if the dust is all going to settle tonight. But here in New Hampshire, we, we had a great night. We're doing really, really well. So as you can see, people get, are getting excited. We're having a lot of fun. But uh, we still have results to come in. So I, the, the expectation is, did you engage with the voter? Did you listen to them? Did you connect on their level on their issues, which is energy costs and fuel and inflation and those types of things? And I think the Republicans did that very well. Governor Sununu, you brought up that net gain of one that the Republicans need in the Senate. I want to ask you about Don Boldick uh, in the race against Maggie Hassan in your state. You had once called him a conspiracy theorist type, uh, not a serious candidate. Uh, you eventually endorsed him in the end. How do you square that for people watching tonight? Well, look, primaries are all about party. We know that, and we kind of have our favorites, and we have it out, and we had our primary in September. But one of the things I have to do as governor is always bring that party together. And I can tell you that while I may have differences with a candidate here or there, uh, getting rid of the Democrat delegation out of, out of New Hampshire is absolutely critical. They just haven't done anything. So let's put policy aside. They don't show up. They don't debate. They don't have town halls. They don't engage with that retail voter the way they're supposed to. So I think bringing something fresh and new to the table, even though we might not agree on every issue, we have our differences. Uh, something fresh and new for the state of New Hampshire and for the country is really important. But you know there's a bigger issue here, Governor Sununu, and you have a national profile. You know that there are nearly uh, 200 election deniers on the ballot. Many of them uh, have won tonight. What does that pretend for the future in this country? Uh, if you're embracing Don Bullock, who was an election denier, uh, saying that uh, Joe Biden did not win the election, and it was only until this fall that he, that he changed course. Are you not at all concerned that there are 200 election deniers on the ballot in this country? Well, I'll tell you, I, I think you're wrong by saying that's a bigger issue. That is not a bigger issue I didn't than inflation say it was a bigger issue. And having I didn't a mortgage say, payment. I didn't say it was a bigger issue. I said it is an issue, and you know that it's an issue. You have a national profile. Do you, what do you think for the future sure. of this country? Is it healthy to have election deniers on the ballot? Look, the, obviously the election in 2020 was fair and square, and Biden won, and, and, and we're moving forward from that. I know the press likes to talk a lot about that, and you're right, it isn't helpful. Um, it is because it's, those issues aren't what's connecting with the average voter. So as, the more we talk about it, the more we're not connecting with folks on their level about what's important to them. So I know you're you know, celebrating. you got to have the hearings and figure out exactly what happened. That's just... I know you're celebrating your victory tonight. There's going to be a lot of talk Sorry. about whether or not you could potentially uh, run for president. I want to ask you about someone else who has said he will announce uh, next week, next Tuesday. You were asked about former President Trump announcing before Christmas and said it was a terrible idea. Why so? Yeah. Well, because once the dust settles on this election, you know what America wants? They want to take a break. Right? They want to get back to watching football games and enjoying Thanksgiving and do some Christmas shopping. We can get to the politics in early 23. So anyone who's thinking in, to drive a big political message right after the really insanity, I mean, the craziness of, an, of this election cycle, uh, I think is missing the opportunity and, and, and missing what, what is really important to folks. Folks want to take the break. So, And whether he announces he's running for president or not, it, it really doesn't matter. It's not going to keep anybody out of the race. It's not going to surprise anybody. Um, you know, if that secret is, is the worst kept secret in the world if he is going to announce. So I think he'll announce. It'll be a, a, a blip on the radar and we'll all move forward and enjoy Thanksgiving and the holidays. And we'll really get back as a nation to figuring out where the presidential stuff goes in, you know, early to mid-23. Any chance you'll run in 2024? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What was that? Any chance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Any no, chance look, you'll run? My focus is, <laughs> look, my... <laughs> I'm sorry, you're, you're breaking up. I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. The, exactly. The, the people are having too much fun. Those no, supporters look, in focus, New Hampshire are so I love loud. This state, I, I, know I how that love goes. New Hampshire. I know you do. I, I just said your New Hampshire voters. I love this voters, state. I they, love being governor, and that's I, my focus. Yeah. Okay, so once you get through Thanksgiving and Christmas, as you say, the former president should do as well. Come the first of the year, you haven't ruled it out. It's in consideration. 
I, I tell you what, my, my, I, in all sincerity, I got a, I, I balance budgets. I know Washington doesn't do that, but I do, and I got a budget I got to worry about. I got an opioid crisis we've redesigned to get better results. I got a mental health. Those are the issues that, and that's where all my attention is going to go. And I don't think you're going to see anyone jumping into the presidential race. Everyone's got to have a message. And look, I think the message needs to be politics doesn't have to be so divisive. I think it can be a positive message. It's not rainbows and unicorns all the time, but you need a, a kind of leadership in this country that brings out the best in people, that inspires folks in that positive way. And, and hopefully we get a little more of that the further away we get from 2020. And you'll see other candidates emerge. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And just before I let you go, just what you're, you're not ruling it out. Oh, I'm not even thinking about it. I'm not even thinking about it. So I don't, I don't rule anything in. I don't rule anything out. I don't make promises. I don't break promises. So that's just, that's just where we go. All right. Governor Sunu, who's been reelected uh, in the state of New Hampshire. Say hello to your supporters there behind you. And we sure do appreciate you taking some time uh, for us tonight. I know you you're bet. watching the Senate race. Did I, did I dodge? Did I dodge that? You well did. Enough? You dodged. You dodged. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see you in 2024. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Back here in the studio. Governor Chris Christie, um, what do you think of that? I mean, obviously, he's not He's not saying he's not considering it. He's just not ready to go there yet. Now, look, Chris is a smart guy, and he's been a very good governor. And that's why he won by as much as he won by tonight and as early as he did. And so, look, there's going to be you know, this idea that somehow, you know, Donald Trump is going to drive a whole bunch of people out of the race if he announces next week is just silliness, in my view, because anybody who wants to be president, if, you, if you're going to not get in because someone else announced, then you probably don't have what it takes to be president to begin with. So I think Chris is doing the right thing. He just won. He's not going to answer your question because he probably hasn't even talked to his wife about it yet, let alone talk to the people in New Hampshire who just sent him back. And, you know, we talked earlier about, um, about Trump and what would happen tonight if some of the candidates he endorsed won and some of them lost. And, and I said to you, I predicted to you that he would take all the credit if they won and none of the blame if they lost. Here is his quote on TV tonight about tonight's results. Well, I think if they win, I should get all the credit. If they lose... I should not be blamed at all. all right. Governor Chris. So tonight. I don't know. I think I know the guy. <laughs> yeah, I think you do. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.